guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. You join me today for a little adventure out with the Mark 7 Golf R. Of course, recently tipped over the milestone of 100,000 miles. We're currently sitting at 100,057 miles uh, and there is a lot more to do in the next couple of months because if you did watch that video, you'll know that there is going to be quite a few videos of this car coming up and this is, of course, one of them. Um, basically, I'm preparing this car for this year's track season um, and the first proper outing is uh, a trip to the infamous Nürburgring and the aim before then is to get as many things sorted upgraded and everything like that um, which I know were a problem last year and my last trip to the Nürburgring as well and one of those is cooling now today's video is going to be fitting to be honest what I see as an essential part for an MQB car which is used out on track such as this one. I can't believe I haven't done it already and I'll tell you more of what exactly that is when I arrive at my destination but this car does run quite hot even just at standard motorway speeds right now we're currently sat at 88 degrees oil temperature. It does normally if you get into some traffic go into the 90s which is not dangerous but it is quite hot um, and obviously then when you um, are driving in anger on track that can quickly increase. Now whilst I do have a fair few um, cooling modifications on the car such as an oil cooler, a standard intercooler, that kind of thing, there are some other bits which I want to do uh, and today's video is not the only cooling based modification and when I tell you what it is you might struggle to see why it is a cooling modification um, but I'll get into all of that when I do arrive at my destination which today is VW Group Specialist VGS uh, up in Swindon but yeah essential modification fitted to the Golf R today I'll tell you more when I do arrive at VGS in about half an hour's time. car is straight on inside the workshop just getting it set up on the ramp at the moment however over here we have what we're fitting today this is the Iobed baffled sump so at the moment my car runs the standard plastic sump quite a weak unit really I mean even though it's protected on my car <laughs> with this thing but basically it doesn't have any baffles in it so the oil can freely you know slosh around when hard cornering this as you can see has various baffles in it basically to stop the oil sloshing around risking uh, oil starvation and stuff like that it's also made of aluminium um, so a little bit lighter as well and also has two main cooling abilities one of which it has a larger consumption of oil so you can actually fit i think 0.8 liters more oil in the sump so naturally larger volume of oil equals just cooler oil in general and also the fact that where it is aluminium as you're driving along um, the metal gets cold uh, you know as the airflow uh, kind of hits it and therefore cools the oil inside of it very cool though looking at kind of all the different baffles uh, we've got the sump plug around this side just here and yeah very cool now big shout out to jack from custom bag parts who supplies this and a ton of other track orientated mqb stuff so do give him a shout if you need anything like that um, to be fair this car has a lot of stuff from jack including the pcv delete and stuff like that so i'll leave all his details down in the description give him a shout he's got a golf uh, gti as well mark 7 which he's building into something very similar to this um, but yeah that is the plan uh, for today and naturally it makes total sense to do uh, a service at the same time first job is to obviously drain the oil as i said splitter is just in front of the sump so should be all good uh, in terms of accessibility let that drain out now normally i get this serviced on about 5,000 mile intervals might make that kind of three or four depending on how things go this year in terms of usage track days that kind of thing it's been about four thousand four and a half thousand miles since the last service uh, which was middle of last year but yeah we'll get this draining then obviously once that's all done, get the sump off the original one and then look at getting the Iobed one on. OK, 
Okay, baffled sump is now in the car. Obviously loads of fixings. The OEM fixings, of course, are going back in. There's also like a, a permanent sealant, not a permanent sealant, sorry, like a, I don't know, a sealant, a form of sealant, uh, which is obviously put around the edge of the sump uh, just to make sure it's all seated correctly. However, the reason I come outside, I wanna show you some of the cars out here. Now this, uh, obviously rather fitting from the plate, is one of VGS's cars running over 500 horsepower. This is the R500, as I think they nickname it. Um, not a full track car, but one which definitely does see uh, a lot of track action and does have a lot of nice uh, track orientated modifications. Look at this, AR1s all round, big brakes, AP Racing 5000 R kit, which is uh, basically the touring car setup. Uh, really nice livery, actually. Look at this. Now, livery is something I really want to do on my car at some point. Very cool. And then over here, we have a fully built RS3 saloon. This doesn't run a hybrid turbo. We're running a full frame turbo on this thing. And once it's tuned on E85, I am told it should run about a thousand horsepower. Proper cool thing, even though it is clearly modified with the wrap and the wheels and everything it still is quite sleeper very cool really like the wrap actually like a satin satin blue wrap but yeah this is cool they have just put a dq500 gearbox in this so the rs3 gearbox obviously a dsg car but yeah my car as i said going well in there baffled sump is now just being fixed all into place had to move the splitter a little bit out of the way um, and i do have more plans for the splitter i know a lot of you will be keen to know what that is i'm not going to tell you just yet uh, a couple of things we're going to have to change uh, in terms of plans. So I will be back here at VGS. That'll be in a separate video. Shouldn't be too long until the car will be done down off the ramp and ready for the journey onwards. Fast forward a little bit of time. The ceiling on the baffled sump has been set. We left it for a couple of hours and then obviously topped it up with oil. And there we go. Another mod ticked off the list, which should definitely help when the car's out on track. What I do plan to do is to test it out a little bit on the way home. So let's hop in. Yeah, see what it's like. But of course, a big thanks to VGS and also Jack from Custom Fag Parts for supplying the baffled sump, of course, to VGS for fitting it. Uh, we will be back here, though, uh, as I said a little bit earlier on. More of that a little bit later. Big thanks to the guys here. OK, get out of the way. Cars everywhere here. <laughs> and as I said, I will be back. Now that is because we've had to change uh, our plan a little bit. So originally the plan was, try not to scrape the splitter, was to bring the car in for the baffled sump, for an oil and filter change service, uh, and also a brake fluid service. Basically, when we had the car on the ramp, we were chatting about various things. It turns out this car needs a little bit more work um, in terms of things like the timing chain kit. That is something which now the car is on 100,000 miles. It's never had a timing chain kit. Um, so I'm led to believe that is needed. It made sense to then push back things like the brake fluid change uh, because the car is just going to be doing road miles for the next month or so. Um, and obviously I need to take the car away today. So we're obviously under a time constraint. So we've done what we can, a certain few things uh, we've pushed back, um, but it just means that I'll have to bring the car back a little bit later down the line, which is not a problem. We still did get done what we needed to. We now have the baffled sump fitted uh, on the car, which is something I've wanted to get on the car for a while. I've heard people uh, in various forums say that, oh, you don't need to run one. And then other people say, oh, you do need to run one. I kind of thought to myself, do you know what? I want to try it. I want to give it a go because I'm confident that what it does uh, and the purpose it serves within the car would be very useful, of course, with this being a track car and that I'm kind of chasing some colder temperatures uh, for the oil. Now, one thing I have just realized, uh, if you watched my last video of this car, actually, you'll know that I had a new windscreen put in and I haven't yet replaced the sun strip. I don't have any sun visors and it suddenly got quite sunny. <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really not good. Just gonna make a silly face for the rest of the journey home, I think. been driving for about 10 miles most of which on the motorway cruising along motorway speeds and I'm only at 61 degrees in fact 60 degrees all temp have a look at this six is pivoting between 60 and 61 that is very very impressive genuinely I did not expect just that 
to affect temperatures that much. By now, I would be sitting at 80, 81, 82 possibly, cruising along at nearly 3,000 RPM, sat at 61 degrees. That is unbelievable. When it's properly up to temperature, and if it's safe to do so, I might drop it down a few gears, slow down a bit, get some hard accelerations in and see what it climbs to because I could quite easily get this up to 91, 92 um, degrees oil temp by just accelerating onto a, off a slip road or something. Genuinely very impressed. Okay, 17 miles covered since I left and I'm at 65. <laughs> that is remarkable. Same oil has been used that was in it before which I'll be honest, could be better. Nothing else has been changed apart from the baffled sum. And I'm at 66 degrees oil temp after driving for 17 miles. And to be honest, the car wasn't completely cold actually. It was probably on about 25 degrees oil temp. Well, we'll get some more revs into it. It's not rising. It did hit 70, by the way, before I did boot it. And I would normally leave it till 80 degrees, I'll be honest, before I boot it. That is remarkable. That pull there raised it by four degrees. <laughs> that is really, really awesome. It's a shame I don't have a track day book because I really what I want to do right now is to go straight to a track day and test it out. So it's at 83 degrees oil temp now. Now it's down to 80. How quick it's cooling it down. And I think it's because it's an alley sump. The, the airflow is literally cooling it down. So the, the, the faster you go, the more airflow, the cooler your oil is. Look at that, 76. <laughs> Let's do it again. I think if we cool down to now 75. 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 82, 81, 80, 79. I know you can't see that, but genuinely, that is incredible. I, I am chuffed with that. I am absolutely chuffed. I need to, like I said, get it onto a track day to really portray this upgrade in testing conditions, you know, like actually driving it hard. Now we're back to 76. Genuinely, I was not expecting it to have that much of an effect because I have three or four other cooling, mod four, four other cooling modifications, which I have all ready to go, which are only gonna help this. Now, like I said, all the details are down below. Um, to get this exact baffled sum from Custom Vag Parts, do follow the link if you are interested. If you've got an S3, a Cupra, or a Golf R, any EA AAA engine, um, or even kind of the Skoda, Skoda Octavia VRS, that kind of thing, this will fit. And if you like your track days or like driving your car hard and are a little bit conscious of temperatures, then honestly, give this a go. I'm down to 72 degrees oil temp. <laughs> I'm practically cold. <laughs> but yeah, I am very happy with that. Literally just a couple accelerations on a general cruise back home, and that has proved its weight in gold um, to me already. Um, a big thank you again to the team at VGS. Um, again, you can find all their details down in the description down below as well. There's obviously the custom bag parts links as well. Uh, but for me today, that is it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.